Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Project Maple Leaf. Now today on Project Maple Leaf, we are going to be working on cleaning off all of the bracketry and the things that we're not going to use on the Super Duty Dana 60. So if you've never done it before, you're in for a pretty, uh, pretty wild, dirty, disgusting, sweaty, hot ride, but check it out. So when you start in on a project like this and you take an axle that was never meant to be under a Jeep out of a junkyard and try to modify it, there's obviously gonna be brackets and things on the axle that you can't use that take up a lot of space. Well, those have to go. On this side, on the passenger side of the axle, it's not overly difficult to remove these because as you can see, they're just made out of uh, plate, you know, sheet metal. It's thick but it will cut off with a grinder and you can, you can kind of grind it down and smooth it out. Now, there are some cast things over here that we're gonna have to contend with and fight with and cast forged type steel is definitely more difficult to cut and grind than sheet metal and plate. Um, and that brings us over to the driver side of this axle. Now, later in this video, I'll talk more about it and I'll give you the strategies and how I do it with normal everyday tools. It's not necessarily the most efficient way to do it, but it does work. I use a reciprocating saw. I use a couple of like, you know, like a seven pound mini sledgehammer. I use a couple of pry bars um, and I wind up using pliers and a four and a half inch angle grinder and that's it. That will get it done. Those are tools that you can commonly find at most home improvement stores. They don't need to be super high quality. Um, you just need to have better quality uh, cut off discs and blades. Now, as we just talked about, we're gonna start on the passenger side. Sometimes I find, especially if it's your first time, if you start on that driver's side, it's gonna make you feel pretty defeated pretty quickly because it is way more difficult. There's just a lot less space and you're dealing with cast steel. On this side of the axle, the first thing that we're gonna knock out is gonna be these radius arm bushings. Um, and I do that by basically cutting into the top over here and that'll allow me to have a notch cut out of it and then I just knock it out with a hammer. So let's get to it. Once those two upper and lower bushings are knocked out of there, I basically just kind of hack away at it and chip away at it with a reciprocating saw and a grinder until it's basically cut off this entire bracket. And then we move on to the front side of it and what's over here on the closer to the, to the knuckle to your C on the outside of the axle tube. Let's get back to it. All right, so at this point, we basically have most of that rear radius arm mount on the passenger side tube removed. I've obviously rotated the axle so that I have better access to other pieces of it. And that's the downside when you're using the tools that I'm choosing to use for this. Uh, like I said, there are other ones. You can use a plasma cutter, you can use a, a, an oxyacetylene torch to just kind of cut through a lot of this stuff and melt it off. It would be a lot faster. But as you guys know, the whole point of this channel is for the normal everyday guy using normal everyday tools. I actually have a plasma cutter up there, but I'm doing it this way to show you guys that with a few dollars at a home improvement store, probably tools you have in your garage, you can get it done this way and the result is still pretty good. Now, in order to move on, my next section and plan of attack is gonna to be to take off the factory track bar mount uh, on this Super Duty axle. Now the problem with this track bar mount is it's made of cast steel. Um, so it's a lot tougher and a lot thicker. I'm gonna use a grinding wheel to kind of cut into it over here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. We're gonna knock this out with a hammer. And then once that's done, I'm gonna continue to work on the top of this radi arm, radius arm mount, which actually was the bump stop on the Super Duty axle.
And you're probably wondering now, because obviously with, you know, TV, YouTube, magic, this hasn't taken all that long. In all reality, it really hasn't, right? With basic hand tools, um, this has taken me about 40 minutes. And in that time, I've gotten a drink, I've had to move the camera around, I've had to stop recording, I had to start recording, you know, so clearly it wouldn't take that long if I wasn't filming. I've also had to stop for neighbors with loud exhaust systems, the garbage truck coming by, right? All the stuff that normally goes into filming. So it really, it really isn't that bad and now with most of this stuff over here cut off we are on to the factory sway bar mount now this factory sway bar mount um, has a bracket that basically goes all the way around the axle tube so same fashion that i use over here i'm just going to grind into the welds maybe cut straight in in a couple of places to break it off in smaller pieces work it so that the entire thing is off giving me room to finish removing this At this cast. point, the passenger side axle tube is pretty cleaned off, right? The only thing left was that mount. I went into it from this side with a reciprocating saw, did the same thing on this side, cleaned it up with a grinding wheel. There's still a little bit more cleaning to do. We'll get to that later. I'll show you the tools I use and what the, the aftermath of this looks like, but we're pretty much done on the passenger side. Now we're off to the fun side, okay? Now I'm not gonna show you guys all of this stuff because obviously on this side, we're just removing the same radius arm bracket, but it's made out of cast. So we're gonna cut it using the same tools. It's just gonna take a lot longer. This bracket, just like it was on the passenger side tube, is the same. It's made out of, it's made out of the same kind of steel. It's gonna cut right off the same way. Where this side is truly different is we actually have to remove the cast section that comes over the axle tube, this piece, okay? We have to cut two inches off of that. Um, and you're gonna have to do that no matter what you do with this axle because there's barely any tube sticking out over here and you need some of that in order to mount uh, your suspension mounts or your truss. So we're gonna have to do that. I will show you how when it comes to that point but for now, I'm just gonna get working the same way. Take some notches out of this, knock it out with a hammer, same thing on the bottom. Okay guys, so as you can see, the back side of this axle tube is pretty cleaned off. There's obviously a lot of finish work and grinding that I need to do to make it look like it was never here, but the next part of our process is going to be to measure from the end of this axle tube in two inches and then scribe a line all the way around. Now, I do that by just measuring in, putting a dot, go down a little bit, measure in, put a dot, and then connect the dots. That way I can make sure that I'm perfectly two inches in all the way around this tube. I cut that line with a grinding wheel. Again, some people use like a portable handheld bandsaw, a porta band. Um, but I, I've had success using the grinding wheel, it's no big deal, going all the way around. And then I basically come in and connect to that line that I cut um, on angles and things like that, just to, to basically knock it off in pieces so I can get it off. So another, uh, another hour or so, we have this piece off with a grinder, right? We said that we had to cut into it. You can see in some places I didn't cut quite deep enough and then I had to work it back and forth as you just saw in order to break it off. These pieces here, these nubs are the welds that were holding the tube to the cast center section. Now, there still are a couple of those on the front side holding it together, but we're gonna weld the tube to the center section. Um, I'll talk to you guys how to do that in another video. But obviously removing this allowed us to have plenty of room to now get in there, cut these welds out, and then remove this section. We also have enough axle tube to weld a truss or whatever your suspension setup is going to be on this axle. Okay guys, I feel like I got a huge mission accomplished here because the axle is finally done being cut. I have the spring perch mount 
cut off on the passenger side. The passenger side axle tube is smooth. The driver's side, same thing, cut off. I have the axle tube, two inches of that removed. I have the sway bar and shock mount removed, and I have the radius arm bracket removed. Now I just have to do a bunch of grinding to clean it up and make it look like it was all never there. And finish. check out all of the consumables that I have used so far. So again, guys, this is doable with regular basic tools. Uh, Benchmark Abrasives makes a great, uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but they make a great cutoff wheel. They last a super long time. I only broke one and I broke it because I put my mini sledge down on top of it. Um, they also make flap discs, which I'm about to use to grind down more. You can see them right there, Benchmark Abrasives. And I spent money and used Diablo um, reciprocating saw blades. I have found over the years of doing this that when you use the cheaper blades, you just go through more of them. You spend a lot more time changing blades. You spend a lot more time not cutting as efficiently as if you had had a regular blade and you wind up wasting a lot of time. Um, and in the end, you spend about the same money because you use so many extra blades. Back to grinding, I'll check in with y'all. All right guys, so there you have it. Obviously my floor is disgusting. I've already vacuumed it three times just today alone, but you can see that the axle is completely stripped, right? So just to recap, this is the passenger side. We cut the original spring perch off. I'll weld in that hole. We cut all the brackets off. These will be filled in with a welder before I paint it and then ground down nice and smooth. We took all the paint off with a stripping disc made from Benchmark Abrasive. Same thing on the diff, right? We cleaned that all up. Didn't worry about the diff cover because we're replacing it. Cut the radius arm bracket off the back of this cast section here. Obviously, it looks like it was never there. And then took two inches off the axle tube by cutting all the way around and then going in at angles that you can see here, and then popping it off with a pry bar and a hammer. Wound up cleaning up the seas a little bit. And uh, guys, at this point, at this point, we are ready to finish welding up this axle as far as filling in those little nicks that I just mentioned, and then throwing a coat of paint on it. This axle is pretty much ready for some suspension brackets welding the tubes to the cast center section, and then we'll get into re-gearing it. But guys, this is a long process. Probably took me about 10 hours, eight hours in all to get it looking like this after it was disassembled, as you just saw in video number three. So take your time. It can be done, okay, with a grinder and a reciprocating saw. But guys, it can also be done a little bit quicker with maybe a torch and a port -a band But there you have it. So guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and share this with your buddies.